I am Kufu. Kufu, welcome. Thank you for coming. This is Max. Max, it is good to see you again. How may I help you? Uh, how are you these days? As well as can be expected. Thank you. Um, I finished reading a book about uh, genetic history of the of the humanity. It's a mainstream book based on the developments in the last few years. And apparently Neanderthal was uh, very interesting, uh, very developed and uh, very cultured. So my question is, uh, maybe Neanderthals are Lemurians? No, um, Neanderthal were the basic humans that were on the planet before aliens really started to seed too much. They were, uh, they were cultured in some ways. They were a part of uh, the aboriginal group, if you would, would like what to call it that. Uh, there had been a little bit of alien interaction before they arrived or before they uh, developed. However, not much. Then this planet became very busy after they did arrive, and a lot of things happened after that. But let me tell you that they did have larger heads. They were a large mm -hmm. being, the largest of the aboriginal man. They were big boned and tall and uh, would be comparable to a Yeti without all the hair. Uh huh. So therefore it would be, it's true that they had a large uh, Im impending look, but they were actually not so rugged. They did have to do a lot of uh, manual labor and hunting and things of this nature, but they were also had family life and culture in that sense. They, they mated uh, with one person usually, but some mated with more than one, but it was uh, that they usually mated with one. And uh, it was that in this period, they were developing fire and inventing things that were very small, that were like spears and things to help with hunting and things of that nature. What questions do you have about that period? So they, uh, they went extinct uh, at, uh, at a certain ice age. Basically, there was a big climatic change on Earth and uh, humans survived and uh, Neanderthals uh, went extinct. Uh, why was that? Because their survival depended on the Ice Age in many senses. And when, the, when it stopped, they could not reorganize fast enough to survive. And plus, um, there were many other things. They couldn't develop a way to survive by just eating uh, plants and there were certain animals that were dangerous and they weren't used to hunting these particular animals and they couldn't find the nourishment they needed to survive. It was, it was not that fast of a transition, but it was a, definitely a very um, strategic one at that time they could not they could not change fast enough so why did humans were able to change fast enough because they were helped oh so why did we get help and neanderthals didn't um it was because uh those that were looking to help the humans liked the human form better, liked the, the way that uh, 
they looked better and they could develop them more easily. They were easier to manage. And so, yes, uh, humans were much easier to manage. Ah, so why were we machines easier to manage? Um, because you were looking upon those that were managing you as gods or as uh, fearful creatures, you did not want to make them upset, whereas the then a Neanderthal man would uh, attack them. Really? Yes. Ah. Yeah, same happened to our uh, domesticated animals. We domesticated only those who were obedient. Yes. And who were easy to uh, put uh, in uh, enclosure, enclosed spaces like uh, the um, goats that can jump over the fence. You can't domesticate them because they go, they jump away. Correct. Uh, the cows wouldn't even break the fence, and, and horses they would stay within the corral and uh, can be domesticated. Correct. All right. So humans were more Easy benign. Yeah. yeah, more benign. Are we more? Um, uh, capable of faster evolution for our biological design, or is it it's easier to genetically manipulate us? It was more easily, you, your form was more pleasing and, what, and your thought processes were uh, benign and easy to manipulate. And so education was easier because you would pay attention to those that you feared and were ah. able to understand uh, you wanted to develop so that they wouldn't harm you. Wow. So uh, are we more peaceful than Neanderthal or the other way around? Actually, the Neanderthals were more protective of their family and but were more peaceful within their family. but any outside aggravation or an antagonistic actions, they would attack and protect the family. Humans sort of became, fell down and, and, and pretended like they were dead in some cases instead of fighting. Ah, so we are more cowardly, all right. Uh, so American Indians, North American Indians uh, fought the Westerners and uh, went extinct, were uh, get genocided. And, uh, but Mayans, Mayan people, they mixed with the Spanish and didn't fight actually. So they survived. Yes. Uh huh. So Neanderthal wasn't uh, complacent enough. In some uh, ways, yes. So, so was it? They were left to on their own. The humans were helped uh, with uh, food and things of this nature while they were being studied. Uh -huh. So Neanderthal was going through many different changes. And also, if they did attack any of the aliens, they would be killed. So apparently Neanderthals and humans live together and mix together. So there is a, we have a, uh, quite a lot of Neanderthal genetics in our blood. So we lived uh, in maybe villages or come together somehow. Or maybe we... Uh, there, was, there was interaction, no question. But so maybe, the right? were much larger. Really? Uh -huh. were, were quite a bit larger, yes. Maybe we like their women and they liked our women or something like that. It is possible. So was there a competition between uh, the two species? There was some competition, but it was, but mostly they were friendly toward one another. There was no reason to fight them or to be, uh, it, when coming across them, uh, the humans were a little frightened of them at first, but they saw their the way they acted and they were very friendly in some ways and so they were they eventually did approach them 
very cautiously, but we're able to make friends with them in some ways. There was a language barrier, of course, because neither one spoke the same language and sign language became more popular then. They, they would, it would be more of a sign language kind of a communication. Does Neanderthals have uh, um, related alien races, or maybe they went somewhere else to to evolve on other planets? The Neanderthals did not go to other planets. No. Ah. That's but okay. other planets came here, and before Neanderthal was who he was, there were there were other races and species here, yes. Yeah, that was my other question is that uh, we had, um, as I know, uh, Hyperboreans, then Lemurians, then Atlanteans, and uh, apparently the Neanderthal would, would overlap with uh, at least Lemurians and Atlanteans in, in their uh, development, right? Well, the Atlanteans and Lemurians were very advanced. The mm -hmm. Neanderthal was not, but they did interact at some points, but only peacefully. Uh, it was the Anunnaki who were uh, most aggressive with uh, DNA experiments, and uh, those are the ones that uh, defended themselves against the ne Neanderthal and were uh, and. And when they were antagonized by the Neanderthal, they just annihilated them. Uh, was it uh, like genetic biological weapons genocide or how did they do that? Or just manually, like one by one? Well, they saw them as a lower, but not quite sentient. They didn't even see them as sentient beings, even though they were. But the Anunnaki were the kind of beings that were very advanced and could not relate to them in any way, shape, or form. So they they didn't care about them, basically. So were Neanderthals spiritual? There were some that believed that the stars and the, the moon and the sun were to be worshipped, but there were those that did not have the the sense or the understanding to know spiritual feeling or conception at that time and so there were few that really were involved in uh, any kind of belief systems uh-huh were they telepathic no uh-huh So um, I'm trying to figure out, uh, so we got some of the percentage of Neanderthal, except the, the Africans. The Africans don't have Neanderthal, but uh, all others do. And um, I wonder what, what uh, uh, qualities do we get from that, from these genes? Basically, um better bone structure, mm -hmm. um, uh, a higher um, respiratory system, a, uh, actually a slightly better respiratory system. Well, did you personally communicate with Neanderthals? With what? Did you personally, as Khufu or uh, any of your incarnations, communicate with Neanderthals? We saw them. I did. I could not communicate with them. I uh -huh. did see them. Yes. Uh huh. They would not. They uh, actually were in. They would not communicate with us. They sort of turned and walked away. Uh huh. Because they didn't want. They knew that we could destroy them, and uh -huh. they didn't want anything to do with us. Got it. So, uh, reading that book about uh, the genetic studies, 
they assume that most of the spread of the humans uh, over the planet was uh, by uh, old-fashioned ways of transportation. Essentially, they would walk or uh, use ships, like very primitive, like uh, primitive ships. Well, camels. Yeah. Some, some used camels and elephants, uh, sheep, yeah. uh, different different ways. But however, there were a few instances where they were transported. And the reason why they were transported to different places was for study. And some of them, uh, especially Native American Indians in the United States, were transported there. Oh. And the Big other ones came from outer space or so, yeah. uh -huh. different species. Some right. came down to live on in the that land because they were tired of their technologies and were very advanced in their thought process, but they did not bring technology with them. Oh wow. Because uh, the, the author is puzzled how, how the transfer of uh, certain, uh, yeah, certain genes happened because it was, uh, they can trace it really well and sometimes uh, the, the, the distances are very unpredictable. That is like uh, jumps. Usually they see that if the tribe moves, they, the tribe leaves a trace of, uh, of their genes as, as it goes. And sometimes, sometimes there is a jump, and uh, they try to explain it by like very quick navigation, like using ships and uh, see, um, yeah, how they go. They were some were transported and had to start uh, in a different place. This is was by design. And also, they discovered some so-called ghost populations where uh, there is no trace of the. Population, but uh, just uh, the, um, I mean, there is no uh, living descendants or there is no... DNA that pa has passed on from them. Yeah, there is no, no uh, artifacts, but there is like one piece of the bone which, which is uh, unique and then it gave rise to, it was incorporated in a human lineage, so they call it ghost population. So these, yeah. are, I suppose, are the potential alien, uh, yes, alien genes. Yes. Yeah. One thing which puzzles me, like it's very technical, but basically, uh, the problem is that the old ancient genomes um, uh, are not well conserved, so not well, uh, how do you call it, uh, stored not well. So there is only small fragments available. There is no longer stretches of DNA, so they are not able to assemble the whole genome. They just take those stretches, smaller pieces, and align it over human genome and see where it, where there are mismatches, like single base mismatches, single letter mismatches, which is a very productive way. They they were able to uh, understand a lot, but I assume that some of the alien mm, genomes would have huge insertions and maybe extra chromosomes, and those wouldn't even match to our genome. They would not. And the thing is about that, they would not register as having extra genomes. In chromosomes, some, yeah, huh? They would not, it, there some, the way they're doing the testing, they're mm -hmm. not looking for extra genomes. They're not, not really looking for the alien factor. So All right. They're looking only for the human factor and overlooking the alien factor. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But I, I think we have lots of uh, aliens on the planet right now, and some yeah. of them are very fresh. So they're maybe not studying the right people, and they're not doing a study of um, uh, DNA right now that inter li that links with all of the population. And right. any of the those that are alien would not let their DNA be tested anyway. They would say they would not volunteer for these programs or not take part in anything that they knew that 
anyone would uh, be uh, looking at their DNA. They are very clever on getting away or getting out of these kinds of situations. That's right. If, if they find that their blood has been taken and is going to be used for that particular uh, thing, they will have it. Uh, they will find a way to have it removed. Right, because uh, I don't know, would it be advantageous for us to discover some alien genomes on the Earth? I, I don't know. It's I think like, it would. You think it would? I think it would because the alien genome would show you the advancement of the human genome in some ways. Uh, uh -huh. It would help you to understand uh, connectivity of, uh, of what is the word evolution to All right. in many in many cases and there are different kinds of evolution and different ways for it to express itself within the genomes of aliens you mm -hmm. will be able to figure out what kind of uh, area or space they live in what kind of chemicals are their normal uh, uh, atmosphere, things of this nature. All right. Yeah, or the sequencing of genomes goes faster and faster. I think now we have possibly a thousand of newly sequenced human genomes, but I'm not sure they actually look for extra insertions and extra chromosomes. No, they do not. Yeah, it's, it requires, uh, it's just more expensive. It would require special equipment for that because right. uh, they are there when they are looking for things, but they are right. not aware of how to see them. So it would right. take advancement in the equipment to actually right. be able to see the genomes that are not uh, normal or not mm -hmm. part of human uh, advancement. All right. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait a little bit longer when it becomes more uh, accessible. Of but uh, but that's a possibility because uh, if we start looking like, not maybe aliens, but uh, hybrids, there is lots of hybrids who were born from Earth parents, so they're not even aware that they're hybrids, but I think there is a lot of them. There is quite a few. But so, remember, when, uh -huh. they take, when they look at hybrid blood, they're looking for the human portion of it. And it is right. definitely there in great amounts. Right. And so they are not looking for that hybridization. Even when they are doing testing on crystal children or indigo children, they're still looking for the human factor. Um, suppose I was to do that. My concern is, uh, if there is too few of hybrids, then discovering the way to uh, detect a hybrid genetically would harm them because people would be afraid of uh, uh, of hybrids. Now, yeah. so, but if there is a lot of them, if there is a high percent, then it's all right because everybody is a hybrid, so there is not, not nothing to be afraid of. Everybody is a hybrid. So yeah. what do you think is the percentage of uh, hybrids? It's, uh, quite, uh, it's quite a lot because you would have to look for a couple things. First of all, the blood type. Mm -hmm. O negative and RH blood types are definitely have alien influence. Okay. So those, you can start there. But there is many different, you will find that many people that claim to have alien within them will have odd blood types, mm -hmm. not the norms of the, that of the human race, usually. So RH, or any form of the RH blood type, or, and O negative, are definitely signs of alien uh, beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, one more um, thing which I didn't ask you yet, which I found in that book, is that uh, Ashkenazi Jewish population, basically 
northern looking Jews appeared uh, genetically about 600 years ago, around 12, 15th century. So they, uh, where from did they come? Well, they came from, they were actually hybrids also, but they mm -hmm. came from the Russian area, from uh, Siberia, from uh, Russia, from, actually some of them came from uh, northern China. Okay. And what is the genetic makeup hybrid, of them? They are a hybrid civilization. Uh, what, what, what are they hybrid of? Uh, they have some Octorian in them, mm -hmm. some Syrian, but, uh, and if you will find that to be true, if you study the, uh, uh, many of the Indian, uh, what are they, the Sumerian language there, you will, they will talk about uh, who they are. Oh, so they're more ancient. They didn't appear on earth at, uh, at the 15th century. Are they more ancient? Right. Much, much more. But uh, why did they move and uh, why did they spread so well? This is a question that I do not know the complete answer to. I know that there were some factions that did not agree with one another and so they separated. That is one probable answer to your question. But the other thing is, is that they were very intelligent. They had uh, ways of deciphering the way that the, the earth was that others did not and knew what areas that they would be uh, most welcome in. But when they oh, wow. go to other areas, they, were e they easily were more intelligent, more practical, and took over as the leaders in most places. Just a sec. <sighs> All right. I thank you very much for um, for the conversation. My timer right now they turn off my mind. <laughs> very good. Have a good day. Uh, uh, just a second. If you are still here, um, I will turn off the recording. Do you have any messages for me for? Um,